So hopefully this is um, the beginning of some of the pictures, and then we'll get the slides, and uh, not so much uh, words with my presentation. But you can imagine that your application and brain credits and my other demo app are set up very much the same way, in that you can really draw a line down the middle and say, this half of the application is a command, this half of the side is, is basically my query, um, and my client is really my, you can think of it as your controller. Um, so I guess I could have wrote that as a controller. But really the controller is the guy that he's going to be either issuing the commands or issuing the queries, getting the data back or, or doing whatever he needs to do, and then handling that, that result accordingly. Um, but really, if you notice, it, there's almost a, a bit of a circle uh, coming, going on here in terms of how your information flows through the system. You know, here on the client um, side or within my controller, I've decided to post something to my transcript. So the controller is going to create uh, a command message and then ship that off to the command service that's waiting to receive a message. That command service then handles that message and says, oh, they want to create a, uh, they want to post something to somebody's transcript. Um, I'm going to hand that off to the appropriate domain object that handles uh, um, transcripts. So the domain object then handles uh, that particular transcript, um, transcript entry or posting, and then may or may not, but it may raise uh, zero, one, or many events as a result of the command that's been issued. Uh, so the transcript could issue events that say, um, hey, uh, increase the number of people that have added um, this uh, um, session to their transcript. So that may be one event that gets raised. Another event may be, hey, increase this user's um, uh, transcript credit count. And there could be other um, events being raised. But the domain is going to be the one that handles the business logic, make sure things look right, gather the, the, you know, basically construct the events that need to be raised, and then raise those events. And then you eventually have a denormalizer kind of listening or subscribing to those events. Um, and uh, when, when those events get raised, the denormalizer says, oh, uh, a, uh, a user um, a user posted uh, lesson to transcript event has been raised. I need to, you know, I'm subscribed to that. I get it in. I read the information, and I write it in a denormalized fashion to my read model. So this is um, pretty complex, it sounds like, but really each stage from the command service to the domain to the event to the normalizer is almost like a message transformation stage. Um, that command service receives that command and transforms that command into a call to a domain object. That domain object is just having a method called on it or its constructor called, and then it evaluates the information that's been passed in and decides whether or not to construct one or more events to be raised. And those events that are raised have all the information that the denormalizers need in order to write them to the read model. So really all the heavy lifting is going on in the domain. Um, the commands and the events are essentially messages. And the denormalizer does really not much more than takes the events that have been raised and writes them directly into the, uh, into the database. So, I mean, there may be a little bit of manipulation, but essentially that the normalizer is fairly dumb, and this is writing information. All that validation, all that business logic has already been handled by the domain. So as a result, um, you have a fairly simple system where you have probably the bulk of your logic where it should be in your domain. On the read side, it's pretty simple. You have a repository class, set of classes, link to SQL, entity framework, maybe just straight ADO.net, um, all it's doing is it's going against the read model. So it's just essentially, at, at its very basic core, and I wouldn't recommend doing this, but really just issuing select star statements against that read model. Hey, I want to show the user's transcript. Select star from user transcript. And pull them all back, hand it back to the controller, and the controller does whatever it needs to do. Or the repository, of course, you know, creates the view model and does all that kind of stuff and hands it back. But, um, but at its essence, though, that repository level, that data access layer, is just going against one or maybe two tables in that read model to get data out. And as a result, there's not a lot of joining going on. There's not a lot of, um, I mean, you might have some criteria that needs to be passed in, some, some perhaps complex work clauses, but, but those joins are going to be significantly, significantly reduced um, as a result. So your, your reads are super simple and should be super quick, um, where you might run into uh, a little bit of 
time is writing that information into the read model from the, normal, from the denormalizer level. But the thing is, it's all asynchronous in the background anyway. No one's waiting for that to happen. So if it takes a second, or if it takes two seconds, it may not be that bad. Um, so that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's kind of what CRS does or allows you to, to do with your application. Split that thing right down the middle, and you end up with, with uh, two halves of an application. If I were to look at this in terms of how this might be um, applied to Azure, I could organize these things in terms of web roles and worker roles and perhaps SQL Azure, some other repository. So I could take, I haven't changed the boxes, I've just organized them a little bit differently. That web role that I'm creating could contain just my ASPI and NMBC controllers, repository, data assets layer, that kind of stuff. Um, the worker role contains my command service that's listening uh, for the commands being issued, and then all of my domain logic and the events being raised in my denormalizers. Um, an event store, and I'm not going to get into event sourcing. Uh, that's that's a discussion in and of itself. <laughs> um, that essentially is another flat table, and that very well could be table storage. It could be another SQL Azure database. Um, I've used both. Um, I, I, I tend to like uh, table storage better than, than a straight database, um, but it really could be whatever you want it to be. Um, but really, this is how you may want to separate your, your roles out in terms of a CQRS implementation in the cloud. So again, we, we kind of talked about some of the steps on the command side and what, what happens and, and really what's going on in terms of the commands being issued and rallying to the domain, the domain raises the events, and then the events are handled by the normalizer. Um, and really, each step is just one more message being sent or one message being transformed along the way. So uh, let's take a look at a quick um, demo. And so this is a, a uh, I say, a lifeline desire of mine is to create a buzzword bingo game. So I'm not sure if anyone's heard of buzzword bingo or, or BS bingo, um, as, as it may have been uh, told in the past. But this is a, it's a family hour, so I can't, I can't use that, that kind of words. But um, essentially, I'm, I'm sure we've run into situations where um, – We've been in meetings, and there's a lot of talking going on, but very little is really being said. And so people just tend to toss around buzzwords left and right. And uh, there's been a thing going around the Internet for years. I'm sure it's even been before that, where you have uh, um, bingo cards with buzzwords on them. And as you sit in the meeting, you tend to click off what buzzwords you hear. And if you get five in a row, you yell bingo, and you win. Um, so I've decided that I, I need to write a buzzword bingo game online, host it in Azure, um, and uh, just to make meetings a little bit more enjoyable. And actually, this is something I'm, I'm working on, and my goal is to make it a, a Windows phone app at some point in time. So if anybody wants to help out, I'm, I'm always looking for help because I'm, I'm not a silver light guy, so I probably need a little bit of help here. Um, just a quick run through of the application just so you can see what's going on. Um, I actually already have it hosted up in Azure, so it's you know by the cloudapp.net site. So a very fancy welcome page, uh, thanks to free CSS templates. Uh, I love them. So I can go ahead and I can create a card. Over. Um, I can say, give it a name, Azure User Group Tests. Oops. Oh. Jerry. Uh, I'm nervous. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and create the card. And so what's happening is I just created that card, the command was issued, and now I redirected the user back to the home page, but I very well could have redirected them somewhere else, maybe another page that says, hey, we want to create another card, or maybe a list of cards. Um, I, I didn't do that, but here's my, my list of cards, and hopefully it's in there already. So here's my, my card that was created. So you can imagine what just happened there is I created a command to create a card. I basically shipped it off to my command service. My command service picked it up sent it through the domain, created a card, and uh, stuck it in the read model. And now here's my list of cards. And then I can go ahead and view my card. And, of course, this isn't bingo, it's buzzgo. Um, so you have to get five in a row. So, you know, perhaps I'm, I'm uh, you know, sitting in a meeting and, and someone says, well, we need to, you know, spin up our mind share in order to leverage um, some design patterns and, you uh, make this all a big win-win in terms of our globalization efforts. So just sitting in that meeting, I've now clicked on six squares and, and everything is happy, and I'm, I'm pretty close to getting a bingo here. Uh, I just need analytics and content management 
maybe a few others. But um, what's happened is each one of these squares that I've clicked off is a command that I'm issuing to my CQRS backend. And so it's handling that and, and marking the appropriate square and, and all that. So I, I uh, you know, could refresh that and I should see all my squares uh, still marked. Now, what's really happening here is uh, really is a, um, an asynchronous operation, but I am kind of using some AJAX in order to issue those commands so that the user stays on the page. There's really no need to refresh the page. Um, so I'm giving that system some time in order to handle the asynchronous operation and process everything. And, and uh, you know, so from a user's perspective, this thing is super fast. You know, I'm I'm doing a lot. And in in theory, it's probably not too bad. You know, I'm uh, when I list my cards out, you know, it's really just a it's not a select star, but it's essentially a select star. Um, I'm just going against one single table, and it's just containing all this information. When I view the card, I'm, I'm actually going as another table, and again, it's essentially a select star, and I'm showing that this particular card and its name, and I basically have um, you know, everything uh, in there that I need to render this card with, with a very simple query um, instead of having to do a whole lot of joining um, all around. So it really makes for a, a fairly fast application, and uh, from a user's perspective, can be fairly quick.